So Zach the Jew wants to know about uh, the presentation on power equation. I want wanted to clarify for myself the meaning of each variable. Variable, mostly the D. That wasn't exactly clear to me. If I understood correctly, D does not equal the actual distance of the jump, i.e. how high I jump, but rather the distance over which the force is produced during the force production event that results in the jump, meaning my contact with the floor as I jump. Is that correct? If it is, that means the distance of the contact of my foot with the floor or the full distance of my body as it moves through the jump from the bottom to the top before my foot leaves the floor. I don't really understand that part of the question, but uh, in, in terms of the power equation, which is P, power equals force times distance, quantity, right? divided by time, which is the denominator. So the numerator is F force, how much force you produced, over what distance you produced it. So clearly you are producing the force over the distance it takes you to produce the concentric knee and hip extension. That distance would be from the bottom of the stretch reflex position, the jumping position we would call it if we were doing a power clean to the point at which your feet break the floor. Now, how would you measure that distance? Well, it's, you could assign an arbitrary point in the middle of the body, paint a dot on the shirt or something like that and measure that distance. Point, of course, is, is that is going to be essentially a constant for each individual, right? That's if you want to measure that, but that that is a constant. And the thing about the D in the power equation is that it doesn't do anything to to affect really the outcome of the of the of the the pro the the, the, the sum of the of the total power involved in the production. So the, the critical thing is not D, and we always have said this in our explanation of this. D is an artifact of the test, okay? Like if you're going to measure D for a power clean, what's D? D is going to be the distance from the bar on the floor to the distance uh, to the point at which you rack it on your shoulder. And for power cleans, that pretty much is the same thing for each rep. Well, it would be the same thing. It would be when your feet leave the ground. Yeah, the, the, from the D is yes, is, the, from, from where you where your, where your feet, feet break the ground. the ground and you rack should be essentially simultaneous. <clears throat> so the the D is always really a function of the of the of what you're, of the, of of what you're, you're testing, it. right? Yep. Right. The the two critical factors are T, which is the denominator. All right. Now doing the algebra, the smaller the value of the denominator, the larger the value of P. So in a standing vertical jump test, what we are measuring is the time it takes to generate the force that produces the jump. And once again, that is the time spent during the concentric extension of the knees, hips, and ankles. All right, the, the triple extension, as they call it. This is why it's confusing, though, because you're, you're, it's we're essentially saying the same thing. The D and the T are going to be the amount of time slash distance that you're pushed. Like if you were standing on a scale, you would measure it by the heavy the the force that registers on that scale. Right. If you're on a force plate, the, the <laughs> yeah, which the, is essentially a scale. It's ex exactly. Is, but but what we're actually what we're actually describing with T is is how motor, long how many, it takes you to con, to motor unit call the motor units right. into contraction to produce the physical force necessary to accelerate your body's mass to a sufficient velocity as the force production stops as your feet leave the floor and and therefore the momentum 
which is a function of your body's mass and the velocity with which it is traveling when it leaves the floor that generates the distance that the, your body moves off the yeah. ground. Yeah, so the output, the, the final output is separate from the power equation. So in other words, the distance that you jump, like the, the actual number, 24 inches, 38 inches, whatever that is, that's, that output is separate from the power equation. The power equation is what, is what, uh, res what produces the resulting momentum and all that stuff that gives mm -hmm. you the output. So the weight on the bar, the racking of the bar, that's, that's all the output, but that, that's separate from the power equation. The power equation is, is how much force can you put into the ground if you're measuring a ground reaction. Or in a period, in a of, period of in time. In a very short period right. of time. So, right. so the way, the way I, uh, I've explained it to, to like uh, developing coaches is, is T is your, is your neuromuscular efficiency. D is the test. Don't worry about D. Don't worry about D. And then F is your is your strength. It's your force production, right? So yes. And of those three variables, which one is trainable? Exactly. That's the real question here. Right. Which one is trainable? Uh, the one that is trainable is F. That's how much force you can produce during that very very short period of time. So you know, I was going to guess how much time you spent in the concentric phase of that jump, I would say that it's a quarter of a second. Yeah, something like that. It, it, not, it's certainly not any more than that. Right. Now, you can affect the P variable by either reducing T. So if it's a quarter of a second, you could take it down to point two two seconds but probably not because it, that has other that, implications because that's, because that's genetics right it has other implications too how much how much more force are you going to be able to put in with that shorter if you of cut a time? down on the time yeah because it's always time dependent if you cut yes in fact if you cut down on the time you're probably going to cost yourself velocity right because of the fact that you don't have as much time to recruit the motor units into 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 contraction, but that having been said, the difference in a guy with a 36 inch vertical and a guy with a 22 inch vertical is how many motor units he can get into contraction in that quarter of a second. A guy with a low vertical jump can only recruit, just to pull out of my ass a number, 25% of his motor units. You know, the guy with a 46 inch vertical, he's calling into contraction 65% of his, of his motor units. And that's right. why that test is so good because it's self limiting in terms of there's no right. technique. How no much, technique. how much you can't game it. You can't game. And if you can game it, it's going to, it's going to net you such a small output, such right. a small return that it doesn't matter. Right. Game it's it as test. much as you want. We use the test to determine your genetics. We don't use the test to determine how good you are at passing a test. Yep. Okay. This is, this is. Uh, we have this a. This is like an IQ test. Yeah, we have you know? exactly. You can't you can't game it. We've got a very popular the strength and conditioning coach here in Wichita Falls, who brags after twelve weeks of taking a a, a high school kid, adding half an inch, one inch. To a, to a standing vertical jump. You can do that just with practice, but how much, what, what does that but actually it, tell it, you? What does it tell what you that you don't you? already know? If you've got a kid with a 36 inch vertical and you work with that kid for a, for a month and you're getting up 36 and a half, how is that useful data? Right. Yeah. You <laughs> haven't actually improved their power. No, no. You've just, you've, you've just made you've, them a little bit better at a little bit better at taking the, the test. Jump. And right. that's not why we do the test. Exactly. We want the test to tell us who's got the 36 as opposed to who's got the 22. Right. Right. All right. And of those three variables, F is the one that's trainable. Force production, strength is the one that's trainable. And when we talk about now, the, yeah, go ahead. But, all right. So let me let me let me let me point something very very important out here. All right. If I take a kid with a 22-inch vertical jump 
and I'm and I take you squat from 135 to 405. Have I made him any more explosive? No. No, I haven't. I haven't made him more explosive. But what have I done to P? I've made his power go up. In other words, the kid doesn't hit you any faster, but he hits you three times harder. So I've made him more useful on the field, even though he's not an explosive athlete. All right? Now, what is it about the squat that's different than the standing vertical jump? Standing vertical jump takes place, the, the, the meat of the standing vertical jump takes place in a quarter of a second. How long does a one rep max squat last? Five, six, Five, seven. Five, six, seven, eight seconds yep. maybe, <clears throat> right? In other words, the standing vertical jump gives me only a quarter of a second to recruit as many motor units into contraction as I can get. Whereas the eight second one RM squat gives me eight seconds. Now, which of these two events is going to allow me to recruit more motor units into contraction? The squat, yep. right? So if I'm trying to increase strength, I'm trying to increase the ability to generate force by recruiting more and more and more motor units into contraction, why would I waste time jumping? By definition, you can't put as many motor units into contraction, and therefore you can't train as many motor units to produce force. This is why the standing vertical jump is a test. Right? It's also why if you take that kid from 135 to 405 on his squat, you still have not increased his vertical jump more than 10 or 15%. To the extent you can increase his standing vertical jump, increasing his force production will do it. But it's just not that trainable because the standing vertical jump test measures what happens in a quarter of a second. And what happens in a quarter of a second is genetics. So there's no, there's no value in, there's little, very little value in testing it beyond one or two times. But, but none. Beyond the first time. There, there's, no, there's none. Because it gives you no additional information. It gives you no additional benchmark. It, there's Precise. no standard that you, that you can apply. It's just a test of, of, of genetics. It's a test of who you got in the locker room. And therefore, room. yeah. And, and Who's in the fucking locker yeah. room. So there's people that listen to this and, and hear you talking about uh, vertical jump as if it's something they're going to be able to improve or how do I make it better or why. It doesn't right. fucking matter. It, you're missing the point. It doesn't you're matter. You're missing the point. Right. If, if I take a group of 20 kids and I'm going to put them on my team, I want to know who the starters are going to be. Starters are going to be the ones with the big vertical jump. Now, after I test that, I know what I need to know. I already know that I don't keep doing the standing vertical jump because I can't make them more explosive. And this is what is wrong with this rate of force production right. training bullshit that has become so popular in college weight rooms all over the country. It's pointless. It's absolutely pointless. The point of the weight room is to get the squat, the deadlift, the bench press, and the press up, and to practice that explosion with power cleans and power snatches. Okay, that's the point. That's the whole point. The point is not to do things that are explosive. The point is to make P go up. And you make P go up by making F go up. And that's it. Anything else means that you don't understand the algebra, all right? And, you know, you're a PE major, so I, you know. <laughs> I guess yeah, we got to there, cut you some slack on that. Huh? There, there's, no, there's hardly any value in anybody testing their vertical jump even, especially yeah. if you're not 20. What the fuck? Who cares? Yeah. If you're not, who cares? If, if, why would a 50-year-old man test his vertical jump? Right. I'll tell you what's going to happen. 
it's not going to be very high. <laughs> you're going to be unhappy. You're not going to be <laughs> proud of yourself if you test your vertical <laughs> jump when you're 50 because all of those motor units that can be called into contraction right now yep. are gone. <laughs> yeah. You lose power as you get older. I'm sorry. Yeah. And if you, have, yeah. if you have a big vertical jump, you already know that you do. Like nobody shows up at a team and says, "Hey, let me play here. I've got a 36-inch vertical jump." Like there shit has happened leading up to that point that everybody already knows what you are and who you are. And you by can the way, identify kids that are sure. going to have a big vertical they're jump. They're already playing sports. When they're kids. They're already playing sports at a high <laughs> they're, level. They're standouts in peewee football. Yep. You know. And again, that's just a data point cuz even even you got a guy who's got a high vertical jump doesn't tell you shit about their work, work ethic, ethic. Yeah. are they going to show up you know all that other you know stuff. i mean so. if you've got an if you got your choice between an athlete with a 28 inch vertical jump who will get in there and work his ass off and just won't leave all day yep. mm -hmm. or an athlete with a 36 inch vertical jump that doesn't give a shit right that does the minimum he needs to do to get by i'll take the 28 yep that's right because i can get more out of him right because and of his ability to to improve his potential, but the That's lazy right. kid, and I tell you what, man, you've got. I I think that it's it's almost axiomatic that the best athletes, the the freaks, thirty eight, forty inch verticals, those are the guys that will not work, because they've never had to. I've seen it with my well, kids. No, I've seen yeah. it with my kids. And the ones that do are, are the actual spectacular people that everybody knows. You know, yeah, the, you already the know The ones those that have guys, both right? the talent and the work ethic. And the work you ethic. Know, you know those guys. They're, yeah. they're famous and they're, you know. Making a bunch of money. Yep. But your little kids, I mean, if you got a, if you got a bunch of little kids back there in the Olympic lifting room, mm -hmm. you can immediately tell. Oh, yeah, you can, yeah. What their potential is going to be. Oh, yeah. Lindsay's little kid, he's... If he can keep his mind right, he's going to be a fucking monster when he gets older. Right. He is just explosive. He's just an obnoxious little shit right <laughs> That's now. That's the problem. <laughs> he's but he's he'll, focused. And maybe he'll grow out of that, you know. And, it, 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 you know, you can tell the potential of it, uh, the athletic potential of a child if you know what to look for. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, But going back to what you, you know, and the Bulgar Nick. The Bulgarians, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. these guys, had that was a science yeah. back in the 80s. Before the fall of the, because even though the Bulgarian, that that Bulgaria was within the Soviet communist bloc, there were rivalries between the countries mm -hmm. in terms of weightlifting, and what the Bulgarians would do is that very thing: they'd run around to all the elementary schools and put, they assembled a battery of tests, mm -hmm. looked at vertical jumps and reaction time and all that stuff, and they would, they would find the kids that had the potential, and then they would offer the kids the opportunity with their parents to go to the sports school. Yeah. So they separated them and worked on them from, from pre-adolescence mm -hmm. through Tanner Stage 5. Yeah. And they were good at this, and that's why the Bulgarians beat everybody's ass in weightlifting back back in the 80s and 90s. And that's, and that's also why the Bulgarian method doesn't work for everybody. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> that's that's exactly it. why it It's doesn't. exactly why it doesn't work for everybody. That's absolutely true. But that's a that's a separate discussion. Yeah. I guess we can go ahead and have that since it's my show. Fuck it. Right? Party. <laughs>